Hi, and I'm Denise. And welcome back to another edition of Urban Lifestyles, one of our hotter editions because we are in the midst of summer. I know, to look at us, and when I watch it on TV, it looks as if it's cool, but trust me, it is blazing hot out here. I feel as if I'm melting. Yeah, and anything above 60 I take, and we look cool, that's because, you know, we are cool, right? I am. <laughs> We've got a great show. Some of the things we're going to talk about, you want to tease it, the segment you're doing with lg and &E. That's about solar energy. Stay tuned. And then how about AARP? Oh, that's about aging gracefully. And then there's a new development that's coming to the West End, and uh, it's pretty phenomenal, so we're happy to cover that. And we've got some bike tips for you that's coming up. And before we go, we also need to definitely... Uh, give our remarks concerning Bud Dorsey who recently passed. Uh, he was just a just a pillar of the community and if you were ever at any event you definitely saw Bud. So condolences to his family. The soul of Louisville, I would like to say. Yeah, he definitely did. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back with more. It's time to crack an egg. Easy, any style egg works here. Or a smile. Well done, this looks great. Time to share a story. We have a great way to start our discussion. With old friends yeah, or new ones. When you're a caregiver. Time to breathe in. And help. Good job. Then let it all out. Rah! It's never been easier to connect, learn, and have fun. <laughs> Cheers. So let's do it together. Come find us at aarp.org slash near you. 6.5, your man Nick Cannon is in the building and we taking over. We gonna be wilder every morning. About to have some fun, y'all. Let's go up. Press another move. Locking in to the Nick Cannon Morning Show, 6 to 10 on B. So every month we do a segment with lg and &E, and you got an opportunity to get out with our good friend Natasha to tell us what's going on. It's about solar panels. I know a little bit about it. You think about the global changes going on, uh -huh. but this is why all of that matters. Let's take a look. So we have another new interesting segment with lg and &E. I'm here with Natasha Collins, and this is going to be about solar energy. So you definitely want to pay attention. And Natasha, welcome once again. So good to be here with you. I am excited. I feel as if I am in a movie set or on, in another world. And you know, when you hear something about solar energy and you're up close on it, it's really uh, exciting and impressive to me. But I know that the solar share, in, we're in Simpsonville, Kentucky, and it's a direct result of lg and &E and KU. And these are the customers who participate, you know, in this program. But basically, I want you to share with us how it came to be and how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, uh, this is our solar share facility. If somebody's never been here, it is located in Simpsonville, Kentucky. It's straight off of 64, you can see it. Uh, and um, this is associated with our solar share program. So that is a renewable energy offering for our customers and they have the opportunity to subscribe, to participate, uh, and by doing so, and it, it enables them to do so for as little as 20 cents a day. Um, and uh, they can reap all the benefits that are associated with it without some of that. Um, maybe heavier upfront cost if you were going to install it somewhere on your property or on a home um, and without some of those ongoing maintenance costs. So um, this is our facility. We continue to expand it. And uh, so far since 2019, it's produced 2 million kilowatt hours of energy for um, for uh, customers. So we are really proud of it and uh, glad to be here with you sharing it. Today. Uh, because it's one thing, you know, on like CNN on the news or when it was about the political landscape and bringing in about solar energy, it kind of goes over my head because I really does, I don't know what it entails exactly. So this is exciting. Now I do have another question. I know that lg and &E and KU recently celebrated an exciting new milestone at this site. 
Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned that, you know, participating customers, you know, they subscribed and participate in the solar share program. They get to reap the benefits uh, in terms of credits on their energy bills. And so it's thanks to all of those participating customers that we continue to build out the site because after each uh, section, there are um, 500 kilowatt sections, there are a total of eight planned for this site. And so after each one of those sections is fully subscribed, that's when we put forward plans for construction. So um, we just celebrated the addition of two um, new 500 kilowatt sections, and that is due to, I think there are about 1,300 residential customers um, who are subscribing to these most recently constructed portions. And then uh, in addition to residential customers, it's also business and industrial customers. So Ford is one of our founding partners that we're very proud to have, but on these most recently constructed um, sections, there's a uh, Campbellsville a company called Ingersoll Rand, uh, and then there's also a Louisville company called VG Reed & Sons, um, Center for Women and Families has some shares, so um, really truly, like whether it's a nonprofit, a business or industrial customer, or residential customers, the site and the program are helping them all to meet sustainable goals. You know, customers have, and residential customers have, you know, their own plans for how they want to manage energy and support renewables in their life, and businesses do as well. So we created this for them, and that's why it's so rewarding to see, you know, they keep um, subscribing to the program, so this site keeps, you know, expanding. You know, lg &E, they're always doing something great and fantastic, and getting people open and being receptive to change is always a part of the process. And this is, I'm proud because lg &E is on the cutting edge, right, right here in Louisville, Kentucky, but the benefits that comes with solar energy, and for me, it was about the businesses that have gotten on board with this already, and plus for... Uh, those residents, they get to save money. All right. Anytime yeah. you can save money, it's always a good thing. Yeah. We'll take another break and back with more right after this. At lg and &E and KU, we're always working hard to make your life a little easier because we know you've got your hands full. Our new mobile app gives you the power to check your account balance, review your payment history, and effortlessly pay your bill from anywhere while making it easier than ever to report and track power outages. Download the app today to get the convenience of lg and &E and KU at your fingertips. You know, I'm always excited to hear about new things that are happening in the West End, and we got an opportunity to be a part of the ribbon cutting. Oh, it was fantastic just being in the whole atmosphere. But, you know, I'm excited about the um, villages of West Jefferson and all the different businesses that will be there, and just for the community. But let's just take a look. Got it on three, two, one. Three. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> we're down here in the heart of West Louisville and we're at 12th and Jefferson for the ribbon cutting. And as you can see behind me, it says the villages at West Jefferson. I'm here with William Starks, who has a real estate agency, and you are part of putting this phenomenal piece to the West End together. So tell us about your involvement and how it all got started. Right, so it, it started around eight years ago. Uh, pastor Ferguson had a vision. She's the pastor of the church that's next door to it. And this was a, a vacant lot for a while. And her vision was to, to bring up to the neighborhood. Uh, the Russell area is something that's very passionate for her. And she uh, contacted a couple other developers and got the ball rolling. We came on board maybe about two years ago. Once the, the plans were already in, in operable and once everything was starting to move, then they hired us to manage the building and start getting the tenant selection process going and manage the, the, the development, the construction, and things of that nature. So how has it been in terms of being on the management side? Uh, any obstacles or was this one of those projects that you just said you're going to get engaged and boom, it was done? No. Uh, no issues. Right. Well, on, on paper, everything was it was good. It looked good on paper. But, I mean, we had a lot of uh, setbacks. Then COVID came. We were supposed to have been opening uh, last December. Oh, okay. So now we finally get the ground breaking, and we're in July. So we had some obstacles to overcome, but um, the tenants stayed with us. Okay. Uh, we didn't lose anybody throughout this the delay, so everything came out good. I mean, you know, we sweated and stressed on the back end of it, but... I think everything is coming together and it's a beautiful day today for work. I'm here with Dr. Ferguson. First of all, congratulations on this project. Thank what you. does it mean to see this come to fruition? It just means um, a, a, a time of hope 
um, not only for Molo, but for the residents of our community. You know, we worked real hard to get to this place, and now to just see the support that we have in, in the building being here and all of the resources that are available for our community, you know, it brings hope. One of the first things that somebody said to me uh, when I first came to this community, I said, why don't you stick and stay? He says, because you're going to leave us too. And so um, this is an indication that we're still here, that we're not going anywhere. And I don't think a statement gets any bigger than bricks and mortar. When you look at your congregation and the community, what's some of the feedback that you're hearing? They just are in awe. They did not believe, uh, some of them were naysayers and didn't believe that we would get here, but others encouraged us and kept saying, just keep on going, don't give up. And, and somebody stopped me the other day and said, you did it, didn't you? And you know, that just warmed my heart to know that they've been following us, but um, I was able to keep my word to this community. And my last question, because I know you got a million people that want to talk to you. What's your message to the rest of the community out there as it relates to MOLA? To support us, get busy, uh, replicate what we have here because this is just the beginning. There is much, much more needed in the Russell community and this is just the beginning. And so we encourage everybody to get on board and do what we've done here. It's just amazing all the work and all the efforts and all the sweat equity has paid off. Yeah, um, when I was listening to all the remarks, two words came to mind to, for me and maybe three, perseverance, determination and having an indomitable spirit that she did so you are correct and Bel i know you say having belief having belief we'll take another break and back with more right after this hello max and denise today we're going to talk about the loan fund you know we created the loan fund to create jobs and to stimulate economic development in communities that have not always had access to capital. As a bank, Republic Bank, we recognize that entrepreneurs and small business owners haven't always had access to capital and growing a business without capital is extremely difficult. We've made the process very simple. It's a one-page application. Rather than asking for three years tax returns and three years financial statements, we're simply asking for two years tax returns for the business, two years tax returns for the owner of the business. It's, a, it's just that simple. Uh, flexible terms are being offered and low interest rates. Terms go out to 60 months. Loan proceeds can be used for working capital, inventory, equipment purchases, a vehicle purchase. A line of credit can also be uh, used with the, with the loan proceeds. We're encouraging anyone who has a business or looking to start a business to reach out to us at republicbank.com or go into one of our banking centers and speak with one of our friendly bankers. Thank you, Max and Denise, back to you. You know, we got an opportunity to catch up with Dell Josie, and he's partnered with AARP to bring across this very unique podcast. Is talking about aging gracefully, and I know that's something that we Don't, can both. Do. I know he wasn't going to try to say, but I, yeah, I'm proud. I'll tell you, I am going to take all the help I can get that we can both benefit yeah, from. So, take a look at this. Well, welcome back to Urban Lifestyles. And every month we do a segment with AARP, which is one of our partners. And Denise, you know, I'm very excited about this segment we're going to be talking about today, which is Aging with Grace. And mm -hmm. I want to say, I think you're doing a very good job with that. Oh, thank you very good. Right. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> so this, I know that this segment will definitely pertain to you. One of the people we're going to be talking to today is Dale Josie. And I'm going to let you get started because I know you've got some questions form so we'll open it up well basically welcome Dale uh, basically with AARP this is a subject that's dear to my heart about aging and gracefully but tell us more about yourself and how you decided to become a podcast producer and then mm -hmm. launching your own you know broadcast podcast well, I'm honored to be on uh, Welcome to Urban Lifestyles, and thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about uh, Kentucky AARP and my podcast. 
I um, re reached that magical age uh, where God has blessed us to retire early in February of 2019. And so uh, during that period, I, I was like done. I'm like, freedom is wonderful. And so from uh, March and April, I kind of vegged and looked at the news and all of a sudden everybody's in quarantine in May. And so I figure, okay, what's next for me? You know, and, and the quarantine is odd to say this is, was a blessing. I'm a guy who's always on the go. Mm -hmm. So I began reading, began researching. And one of the topics that came up to me was the attack on, uh, on older people, something called rampant ageism, which we may talk about in a minute. So then I had to find a sponsor. How do I do podcasts? I'm a broadcaster from back in the day. So this resonates with me as well. Okay. So I approached, um, I approached uh, Kentucky AARP, uh, specifically Ron Bridges, their state director, and shared with him my concept. We refined it a little bit. He put me in touch with Scott Wagonast, who's their associate uh, state director. And as you know, the rest is history. And my podcast became a reality in October of, uh, of 2020. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, great, great. And that's Thank a great you. story. So I guess the question I have is, what advice do you have for our viewers who uh, may not have ever tried listening to podcasts and how do they get started? And is there a cost associated with it? Well, I think from the first part of it is in terms of a cost, there's a minimum startup cost, right? Uh, like I have some basic equipment, uh, audio, et cetera, but a lot of everything, the good news is everything's online. So you can do your, you can do your own editing online and you can do your own distribution online. And I have a partnership with another company that gives me that NPR quality, if you will. Um, in terms of listening to podcasts, uh, if you have a computer, if you have a, an iPhone, if you have a uh, Android device, you can listen to a podcast. And where you're going to listen to it, in this case, my national podcast, Aging with Grace, not only can you hear it on my website, which is awg55.com, but you can also go to Stitcher. You can go to uh, Pandora, Apple, Google, wherever you want, like to listen to podcasts. And it's absolutely free. Uh, there's over 100,000 podcasts. Oh, wow. So whatever your interest is, uh, <laughs> you, you can find a podcast about it. And hopefully folks will find mine as, as we continue to age, hopefully with grace. Okay, that's so interesting. So Dale, we know that you are working with AAR, AARP Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about their volunteers and also about the other folks that you're interviewing on Aging with Grace. Mm -hmm. AARP has been an amazing organization and it was very uh, eye-opening as I'm sure it was for you guys. You get to that magical age, you start getting these cards in the mail. <laughs> And uh, as I continued to progress, uh, I became more aware of their mission, their outreach, their services are absolutely amazing. Uh, Scott does a phenomenal job with their, uh, with their volunteers and getting them uh, engaged uh, in the community. Next question was going to be, tell me about one of your favorite interviews as it relates to aging, and you've already shared some of those things. So what is just some of the things that you do on a personal basis as it relates to aging that it, we all know we're going through the transition, but but how, have, how has that changed your approach to your everyday life? Mm -hmm. I have spent an amazing amount of time uh, reading. Uh, this is uh, if you're going to go, if you're going to start a podcast on any subject, you have to become a subject matter expert, right? Mm -hmm. You have to you have to ramp up on it. Um, and as changes were happening to my male body and to my my lovely wife and to others, I began to think, okay, there's got to be a source of information that we need to tap into so we can stay healthy and continue to contribute. So what I suggest, um, uh, what I suggest, Max and Denise, is you is continue to read. But read about and research something you enjoy. I am retired, right? <laughs> and Gwyneth says, "Keep stop telling people that because you're working." But but what I'm doing now, this is a hobby, and I'm making money at it, and and, uh, and I absolutely love it. So it requires a lot of time, study, read, find something you're interested in, and then see uh, about a larger application of that. You mentioned about being pushed out on ageism, and I'm just inserting this here because I'm getting off script. That's why Max is looking no, at No, you're good. I like <laughs> it. Go <laughs> ahead. But, you know, sometimes I listen to the remarks of, you know, like our daughters, and I have to remind them in regards to the wisdom, such as music, and I have mm -hmm. to tell them we're baby boomers, 70s, but um, why are you all always sampling off of our music? Because yeah. We were the top in what we did and we must mm -hmm. be all of that or you wouldn't be sampling. Well said. 
Yeah. That's well said. And that reminds me of a friend of mine. They were on a road trip and the kids in the car were saying, Dad, we got this great group. We just found them. And they said, his wife, we don't want to hear that. Well, no, no, it's an awesome group. We just discovered them. And they gave him the uh, the song. It was the Rolling Stone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so it's like, really? So you just discovered them. They've been around since the 50s, you know? <laughs> But you're right. Kids think they have all the answers. And we all had that. We were all full of vim and vigor. Mm -hmm. But now we can temper that vim and vigor. And we can focus and make something really lasting. You know, his podcast, me, I think it's just great information. And, you know, just to be able to have a source that's out there that you can refer to. And it's really covering all the issues that you can expect from the, from the aging per, uh, population. Yeah, it used to be that, <clears throat> I could think back to maybe our parents' generation, mm -hmm. when you wanted to do something about aging and staying relevant, you were seen as trying to be stepping out of your lane. Correct. But right now, it's very much what we need to do. It's process as we keep going and aging. Right, and aging is something that's going to happen if you continue to live, right? Yep. The only way to stay young is to die, die young. Die young, not trying to do that. We'll take another break and back with more. Hi guys, my name is Brandon Hill, and I'm one of the new employees here at Louisville Water Company. Uh, my role here is um, a system oracle administrator. Basically for the average person, it's IT. I um, support a lot of the different oracle products that, that support our systems like accounting, human resources, customer care and billing. You know, I make sure that, that the system is up for people to pay their water bill. Being in the IT field is it, rewarding but it's, it's, all, it's also challenging because um, as most people know that work in that field, IT is ever evolving and it's always changing. It's always something new and it's always innovations going on. But one of the first things that I've learned is um, Louisville Pure Tap has the best water in the nation. You know, by far, we've ranked first and second throughout the nation in any water taste testing. Louisville Water Company is a great place to work because they're, they're embracing diversity. Um, one of the things that I learned in orientation is that they're developing business resource groups and especially groups like African American resource groups where people can come in and feel welcome. The thing that I would say for somebody who wanted to work for Louisville Water Company, it's a great place to work. Um, they've, they've adapted and uh, are flexible. They're also um, a great employer in the fact that you know that they're not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, Louisville Water Company has been here over a hundred years. And as long as we need water, you'll have a job. Your mothers, fathers, neighbors, and friends. Working hard when the weather is good. And even harder when it's not. With online updates to keep you safe and informed during the storm. Programs to save you energy and money. And new projects to help us provide cleaner, more reliable energy. We are more than an energy company. We are lg and &E. We're LG&E. We are LG&E. I have to say we have been riding at least two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. And we're getting the miles in. We're not riding as many miles as we did pre-COVID, but the fact that we're getting out there and it's about all about the exercise. And, and I think when we ride bikes, it's a little different. We're not really riding for speed. I know you get lost, transfixed looking at houses and neighborhoods. And I'm looking back and you are far behind me because you're in the housing world. Yeah, I like the, the route that we take and uh -huh. going through neighborhoods and I really do. And I know sometimes you want to get more speed and I'm like, go right ahead. Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, but sometimes when we take the bike rides, I would like to stop and maybe grab, you know, like breakfast or something. And I think about leaving the bike unattended right. and not safe. And that's why this segment with middle of town cycling is so important because it's about locking up that very expensive bike that you have. 
take a look. Well, we're back again at Middle of Town Cycling, which is on Bardstown Road at the Waterson Expressway, right behind the bakery. You can't miss it. So you can go grab some pastries and then come around here and find whatever you need, either a bike or bike accessories. So, you know, it used to be very fashionable to have a, a lock on your bike because it, it was safe. But then I started riding with people and it was like, it's not cool. You know, you can't have a lock on your bike and people would dog you out. But now locks are making a comeback, Nira. And I'm here with Nira over here at Middle of Town Cycling. So tell us why the resurgence in locks. Well, as we all know, um, bikes are getting nicer and cooler and more expensive. And it's an easy way to make some quick money if you can get one for free. Um, so one of the things we recommend that somebody buys from us once they buy a bike from us is to get a lock to keep the bike safe. Uh, we've had so many instances where customers have um, just put their bike out uh, with a lock, you know, just the bike out, thinking that, oh, they'll just run into a store and grab something, and the next thing you know, the bike is gone. Yeah. And it may not look cool, but it's very effective to have one. And when I'm looking here, I'm seeing a lot of different types of locks. So, of course, we've got the ones that are color-coordinated with your bikes, if you just want to be fashionable, and then some that look like they're more heavy-duty. So, for the weekend warrior who's getting out, What's your recommendation? So they come in two different, well, come in several different kind of um, options based on what your needs are. So okay. something like this is extremely basic, mm -hmm. comes with a combination lock. You do not have to worry about keeping a key on you or losing a key. So these are basic. They're not very, they're only like, you know, four or five feet long. Um, you may want to use this to tie it around the rear wheel and the frame of the bike and to something that the bike is being put on. So then there is something like this, okay. where it's a longer cable, but it's also a thicker gauge. So even if somebody is trying to cut it, it's going to be a deterrent because it's not as easy to cut this as compared to something like this. Okay. This particular one comes with keys. So if you are the kind of person that forgets your combo, um, then keys is good because you just keep them on you know, your keychain your, with your house keys yeah. or something like that. Then we get into something called the U-locks. So this is more of a combination between this and this because this has a metal lock that you attach the rear frame and the rear triangle in the, in the rear wheel and then you take the excess cable and wrap it around the front wheel. Um, that way nobody just seals the front wheel even though your bike is attached to the rack. Um, then we come on to something like Most of these here are, are, you know, not either if, if they're not as um, uh, durable or easy to crack into, they're lightweight, you can carry them. Or if they're extremely heavy and durable, then they're extremely difficult to carry around when you're riding. These are great in between. They fold so they can be longer, they're easier to carry, and they're not as uh, difficult to carry around. So and they how fold. do you put this on your bike? Does it have some type of something yes. that so mounts to you? unit and you can just mount it to your, or if you carry like a backpack or something yeah. like that, you just put it in your backpack. You know, that is some great information. And, you know, again, everybody has these expensive bikes. Nobody wants to put a lock on them. But I'm telling you, likes are, lock, locks are back in vogue. They are yeah. cool. Once like again. Back in vogue. You yeah. know, all the time we're out, I just am, am amazed all the people I see on bikes. Yeah, and we want everybody to come on and get out and join us. Hit us up so we can figure out where we can all meet and mm -hmm. take a bike ride. Yeah, fun. You know what? I think that's our show. Ooh, and that's our time. And we'll see you back <laughs> here next time on Urban Lifestyles. Bye. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay safe.